Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for your appearance today and your service to our nation, for all those men and women who serve underneath you in Africa Command and Southern Command. Admiral Fowler, I want to return to your comments about the presence of Cuba and Russia in Venezuela. Um, you said earlier, Cuban guards completely surround the Maduro government. Does that mean that uh, Maduro is dependent on the Cuban security and intelligence forces for his continuation in office? Uh, Senator, I think it's a, a good sense of where the loyalty of the Venezuelan people are that uh, his immediate security force is made up of, of Cubans. So the, the men that surround Maduro, like our Secret Service, are Cubans, not Venezuelans. That is my understanding and assessment of the situation. So Venezuela's intelligence security services are so corrupt, so incompetent, so disloyal, so sclerotic that Maduro cannot even count on his own personal safety in his bed at night on his own people. That's a fair assessment, as I understand, Senator. How far does that go throughout the Venezuelan security and intelligence services? Does Nicolas Maduro have to depend on Cubans and Russians on the streets to beat his own people to keep them in line? Senator, I'm not uh, beyond the uh, what I characterize. I'm not uh, aware of the details, but uh, we watch that closely. We've seen reporting of uh, Russian security forces being flown in. We're looking for uh, evidence of how that will play out. And, and certainly this is an area that has our focus as well as all our partners in the interagency. And that was another point you mentioned that you said you, you can't speak of Cuba's presence in Venezuela. Let me stop myself. Can you estimate in this setting how many Cuban security and intelligence officers there are in Venezuela? Sir, I don't, I don't have that number. I'd take that for the record. Uh, is, it fair to, is it fair to say there are lots? I'd, I'd say there's a, there, there, are, there are many, sir. I'd, I'd also mention, Senator, the presence of China. Um, in, in China's not been helpful in diplomatic way. I'll leave that to the diplomats. But uh, uh, China's in there, and they're involved in cyber in, in ways that are absolutely not helpful to a democratic outcome. Um, you talk about Russians. Uh, traveling into the country. Um, uh, have we seen an increase in Russian presence in Venezuela in the last two months uh, as the National Assembly began to take its seat and President Guaido uh, declared himself as interim president and the United States and so many other nations around the world have recognized his legitimacy? Senator, it's hard with Russia uh, to figure out what they're really up to. I, you don't I, say. There was reports last week uh, by a Russian official uh, TASS news agency that I was actually on the Colombian-Venezuela border, uh, and they rolled that with B-roll footage of amphibious landings and uh, helicopter assaults. I was actually walking out of Senator Rubio's office at the time, uh, but uh, I don't think the truth goes very, very far when it comes to their media, sir. Okay, thank you uh, for those comments, Admiral Fowler, about Venezuela. Um, you mentioned China's uh, activity in Venezuela in the cyber domain. They're off obviously are very active as well in uh, what you might call debt diplomacy through their Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, Secretary of State Pompeo was in Panama last October cautioning that nation and all nations who are participants in China's Belt and Road Initiative about what it could mean for their sovereignty. Obviously, China has foreclosed in the port outside Colombo and Sri Lanka. Malaysia recently left the initiative because of China trying to throw its weight around. Um, what's been the results of Secretary Pompeo's visit in the region, and what feedback are you getting from some of these Belt and Road Initiative members? Senator, they, the, mem the states in the region, the countries, they want to continue to partner us. Uh, but I've cautioned the leaders that I've met with that uh, while you might want to do that, if you leverage your ports and, and many of your businesses, including your IT infrastructure, to Chinese companies uh, with no strings attached, and limited understanding of, of what the uh, internal workings are, that you've, you've actually put yourself in jeopardy of having a meaningful security relationship with us. But it gets to a point where I won't be allowed or authorized to share information because I just don't know where that information's going. So been very emphatic about that in terms of how it would affect us being a partner of choice. This is my concern uh, to other questions that have been asked about what this hemisphere looks like uh, 10, 15, 25 years from now and who the partner of choice is. We've got to be present, Senator. Thank you, Admiral Fowler. General Waldhauser, one question for Africa. This is a little bit outside the warfighting domain, but the American military is called 
upon to do a lot outside that domain around the world, especially in your area of operations. Nigeria has its elections next weekend. Nigeria is the seventh largest country in the world, way larger than Russia or Mexico or Japan, um, important ally of ours. Um, what are the prospects for that election? Does it appear that it will be free and fair and that either party, uh, should they win, will be, continue to be a partner of the United States? Senator, we're very much aware of the elections on February 16th. And from the military respect, perspective, we watch that from the standpoint of actions leading up to and what will happen afterwards. We are, we, we, on the intelligence reports, we hope it'll be a, a peaceful election. Uh, but I think our sights are set on forward and not in the rearview mirror, meaning that whoever would win, that now, okay, let's sit down and talk about where we are and how we can best help, whether it be the the displaced people and the, and the issues with the humanitarian issues in, in northern Nigeria, whether it's the, their army and their work against Boko Haram and ISIS West Africa. So my answer to that question is, let's get the election over. And they're watching this today, by the way. I mean, my comments are going to be watched in Nigeria, and it's very important that I don't sway either way. Sure, well. But the bottom line is, wh whoever wins, we want to sit down with them, and now how do we move forward and improve the situation? Good. Well, I, I appreciate that answer, and of course, their election is a choice for the Nigerian people, and we want to have a good, stable relationship with whoever wins uh, to help continue that partnership. Thank you, General. Thank you, Senator Cotton.